Hey, what's up, Young Knight Middle School? Welcome back to another Sunday sermon. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, and before we all begin, we're going to have a few announcements. Okay, I have some special announcements, so make sure you guys listen up. After after service today, make sure you grab some lunch and come back for small group at 1 p.m. Um, also, we are still having Wednesday night Bible studies on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock. And we have Friday night fellowship on Fridays at uh, 7.30. So make sure you come to those. I also have two other special announcements. Number one, next Friday, okay, April 3rd, we are going to be having our drive through okay, our drive through meet and greet. We want our teachers to be there and see and meet all of you guys. So please make sure to sign up. Otherwise, we won't know you're coming. Um, also, uh, we, will have, we will be having a in-person FNF, the first uh, in-person FNF of this whole year uh, since the pandemic started as well. So please make sure you guys come out to that too. I will send a sign out a sign up sheet for that in my email this coming week. Okay, so make sure you sign up for that. It's going to be on April 16th at uh, uh, and there will be dinner provided. And also we will have uh, safety precautions in place so that, uh, you know, we're not getting COVID or starting another COVID hotspot uh, at our church. Okay. So speaking of emails, make sure you sign up for uh, my email list if you're not receiving those announcements. All right. With that being said, let us pray together and then we'll begin. Lord, we ask for your spirit to come and open us up to your word today. May you work in us and speak through the Bible as we meditate on the message that you have prepared for your people. Give us the wisdom to understand and the character to apply what we learn to our walk with you. We thank you for your grace. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So what am I talking about today? Well, we're actually taking a short break from the Ecclesiastes series because today is a special Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. Today is a Palm Sunday. That means we are one week away from Resurrection Sunday. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what Palm Sunday is and what it means. Um, uh, for for us today. Because when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you become a Christian, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Like, how are we supposed to behave or act? Do we become a super holy Christian? We start taking the Bible wherever we go. We pray all the time. We listen to our parents. We never listen to uh, music that has bad words. We never hit our brother or sister we never lie or gossip. Is that what happens when you follow Jesus? Do you become a perfect person like overnight? No, obviously it doesn't. That sounds nice, but that's not what happens, right? No matter how much we try, we don't really change all that much. Why? Well, I want to argue that it's because we have incorrect or wrong expectations. We have wrong expectations about Jesus and who Jesus is. And Palm Sunday this is a story about wrong expectations too. Wrong expectations about faith and wrong expectations about Jesus. So let's turn to Luke chapter 19, verse 37. Okay, And I'll be reading again from the ERV, right? the easy to read version, because it's easy to read. <laughs> um, do you guys know why it's called Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is the day when Jesus comes into Jerusalem and he, he's riding on a donkey and all the people of Jerusalem come out and they put their robes on the ground and they bring all these palm branches and put them in front of him, right? They put these palm branches in front of Jesus to celebrate his coming into Jerusalem. So let's read what happens together, okay? Turn to Luke chapter 19, verse 37. Let's read. Jesus was coming close to Jerusalem. He was already near the bottom of the Mount of Olives. The whole group of followers was happy. They were very excited and praised God. They thanked God for all the powerful things they had seen. They said, Welcome. God bless the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Some of the Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, tell your followers not to say these things. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if my followers didn't say them, these stones would shout them. Okay, now don't put your Bibles away just yet because we're going to look again and we're going to continue on in it. But sounds like a really big, huge party, right? People are celebrating and shouting and yelling. Someone gave his donkey because they said that Jesus was coming, right? Why do you think these people were so happy? What were they celebrating? Well, you have to remember the history behind all of this. You see, the Israelites were under Roman rule for a very long time. They were prisoners to Rome, basically, their whole country. And they thought that Jesus was coming like a mighty king, the strong buff king who was going to destroy Rome. 
and take over the temple in Jerusalem. He was going to make Israel great again, right? That's what they thought he was going to do. They thought he was going to come in and start a war with Rome and set up a new kingdom, right? Look at what they're saying here. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Or in Matthew and Mark, they actually, the people actually shout Hosanna. Hosanna in ancient Hebrew means please save us, right? Please save us. They were saying salvation is here. Jesus' salvation is here. He's going to come and save us from the Romans. Back in those days, palm branches were symbols of victory. They were laying these symbols of victory out in front of Jesus because they were like, he's going to destroy the Romans. He's going to thrash the Romans. He's going to give us victory over Rome. He's going to save us from the evil, horrible Romans. They were going to get salvation through God's chosen one, the Messiah. The people were overjoyed that Jesus was coming. They thought Jesus was going to save them from these slave drivers that they had. They were finally going to be free. See, the Israelites were punished by God for 500 years. They were enslaved, tortured, killed, beaten by the Persians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Romans, the Greeks. Right? Imagine everything horrible that could possibly happen to you and your family. It happened to the Israelites. And they waited for 500 years. 500 years. For a Messiah, for a chosen one, for a Savior. So just imagine with me for a second that you're an Israelite living during these times. Imagine with me. right? People start talking about somebody who's performing miracles. Some people are even saying that he might be the Messiah, the Savior, the chosen one of God. People are saying he's the Christ. People are going, you guys, he is here. Finally, we will have freedom. He is the new Moses. He's going to save us just like Moses saved us from Egypt. This is the new David, the new king. Long live the king. And after three years of hearing about this guy, you finally hear that he's coming to Jerusalem, the capital city. And so what do you do? You get all of your stuff together and you're like, I'm going to go meet this king. You have all these expectations of who Jesus is, what he looks like, what he's going to do. So all the Israelites, they all travel to Jerusalem. They all pour out of Jerusalem, coming out to meet him, this man named Jesus. They throw their robes on the ground because they believe this is their new king. Back then, they only had one robe. And they're throwing this one robe on the ground, in the dirt, for this donkey to go across. He's going to save us all. He is the new king. There's this huge party. There's cheering. There's laughing. People are going nuts. We're finally going to be free from Rome. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Let's read what happens as Jesus gets closer to the city. Let's start from verse 41. Jesus came near Jerusalem. Looking at the city, he began to cry for it and said, I wish you knew today what would bring you peace, but it is hidden from you now. A time is coming when your enemies will build a wall around you and hold you in on all sides. They will destroy you and all your people. Not one stone of your buildings will stay on top of each other. All this will happen because you did not know the time when God came to save you. What is happening? Jesus, this guy, this king, our new king, he is crying Also, he's saying that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. Are you sure this is the right guy? Are you sure this is the Messiah? Are you sure this is the one we've been waiting for? Imagine how confused all these Israelites must have been. You see, in the original language, it doesn't just say that Jesus cried. In the Greek, it actually says eklausen, which is the strongest word for crying that they have. So it's more like Jesus was sobbing. He wasn't just like, he was, oh, he was like full on crying. He was sobbing uncontrollably. The people were watching him do this while riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. This person that they thought was going to kill all the Romans and take over Jerusalem, was crying, was weeping in sadness and telling them that Jerusalem was actually going to be destroyed. Why was Jesus crying? Well, does anyone know what happens a week after Palm Sunday? A whole, just one week, just a few days, five days after Palm Sunday, what happens? The same people who are here cheering for Jesus, celebrating Jesus, 
are the ones that crucify him, are the ones that are screaming in the crowd saying, crucify him, crucify him. We don't want him. We want Barabbas. We want the other criminal to be released. Don't release him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Same people. Different circumstances. Why? What happened? These people were so excited to see him that they're throwing their robes on the ground. They're throwing palm branches on the ground. What happened? These people were worshiping the incorrect Jesus. They were worshiping an expectation of Jesus. They were worshiping what they thought Jesus was. They weren't worshiping Jesus for who he actually was. They were worshiping their own idea of Jesus. They were worshiping this strong, powerful, confident king who would ride in to destroy Rome in their minds. And Jesus knew in their hearts that this was what was happening. They were not worshiping him. They were worshiping a fake version of him in their minds. He knew, Jesus knew that he wasn't going to save them from Rome. And he was weeping here out of sadness because his people were so blind. They didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say or what Jesus had to offer. They didn't want the true Jesus. They just wanted their own version of him, their own expectations of him. Now, what does this mean for us today? Do you have the proper expectations of Jesus? Do you have the right expectations of what Jesus does when he saves you, when he saves other people? Have you ever even thought about your expectations? What are your expectations? I'm sorry, but Jesus doesn't promise happiness in the scriptures. Jesus doesn't promise that you'll be a good person because you follow him. He doesn't promise success, fame, fortune, glory, or honor in this world. Jesus doesn't promise to get you into your dream college or your dream school. He doesn't promise to give you a good grade on your next test. That is not what Jesus does. That's not what he came here to do. Look, if you want to be happy, just join a self-help clinic. Or just do whatever you... If you want to be a good person, be a Buddhist. I, I feel like more Buddhists are nicer people than, than Christians are. If you want friends who share all of your hobbies or interests, go join a club at school. If you want money, I don't know, go to, go to get a tutor so that you could be smarter. I, I don't know, get better grades, whatever. If you want fame or glory, be a TikTok star or do YouTube. I don't know. But that is not what Christians should be expecting from Jesus. That is not what Christians should be expecting from Jesus. Christianity is a faith for the misfits, the ungracious, the gross, the disgusting. This is a faith for sinners. So what do you expect from Jesus? Do you just expect to get into heaven? Do you want a comfortable life maybe? Maybe some of you don't even expect anything at all. You don't even know what it means to be a Christian. On this Palm Sunday, I invite you to think about it. Why? Because the same people who were worshiping Jesus and had the wrong expectations of him end up killing him in a few days. And if you have the wrong expectations, the wrong ideas about who Jesus is and what he's going to give you and what it means to follow him, I guarantee you, you will lose the faith. You will leave the church. You will stop being a Christian because you don't understand what this faith is for. You are the exact same as the people who put him to death if your expectations are wrong. So on this Palm Sunday, I invite you, let's think about it. Let's reflect on it. What is wrong? wrong with our expectations? What is incorrect with the way we think about Christianity and about Jesus? What does being a Christian actually mean? What are some of the lies about Christianity that you have accepted without really thinking about it? Because those expectations, they're not harmless, they're dangerous. They are actually dangerous. If you follow Jesus without properly understanding who he is or what he was like, then one day you will crucify him you will crucify him. That's the exact same way that these Israelites did. So let's remember the true Jesus together on this Palm Sunday and repent for the false expectations that we hold. Let's pray together. Jesus, I ask of you to reveal yourself to us more and more each day. May we see your face, your character, and your heart in the people around us. Give us eyes to see that every single person is made in your image. 
and we should respect and honor them, even the ones that hurt us or are mean to us. Give us hearts that are shaped and formed in your character, and may we love your people with the same everlasting love with which you have loved us. Jesus, help us to see you and make yourself clearer to us as we all fast together and give us the strength and discipline to keep it up. We thank you and we love you. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. All right, you guys, I'll see you guys at small group at 1 p.m. Stay tuned for worship right now and uh, I'll see you in a very uh, few minutes. All right, see you guys, bye. Hey, Young Nak Youth, it's good to have you guys join us for Palm Sunday service. I'm glad you guys are here and watching. I pray that um, you guys have been doing okay, that you guys uh, have um, been doing well in school um, and everything else that's been going on um, as we head into the last couple months um, of the school year for you guys. Um, Easter is next week, so we're going to be uh, thinking about and celebrating um, the gospel um, and thinking about the message and the hope behind um, why we celebrate Easter. And so that's also in some of the songs that um, we're going to be singing today. So I'm going to get started. Why don't we pray together and then we can begin our worship time. Jesus, I pray that uh, all the students, God, all the staff and all the pastors, again, as we come uh, on a Sunday, even though um, we're not all able to meet physically, God, I pray that uh, your spirit would unite us. God, I pray that uh, your spirit would touch our hearts, Lord, as we uh, learn about you, God, as we uh, sing praise, God, that uh, it would be genuine, God, that um, it would be out of adoration uh, for because of what you've done for us, God, that it would be um, a response, Jesus, as we think about Palm Sunday, as we think about um, you coming to Jerusalem on a donkey, uh, to die for our sins, Lord, that that would move something in us, God, that that would remind us, God, of who you are, Lord, and what you've done for us, Lord. So I pray that um, our hearts would be softened today, God, that whatever message, whatever word, and whatever praise, God, that um, we sing, Lord, that it would be honoring to you, God. So I pray for, especially for those who are having a hard time, uh, especially uh, this past week, God, who are having a hard time even trusting and believing you, uh, in you, Lord, um, that you would especially give them an extra measure of grace, God, that you would give them an extra uh, amount of faith and mercy, Lord, this morning uh, as we need it, God. So we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. ask this because he's listening. Hide me now under your knees. Cover me with i 
Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the hope that we have because of the cross. Lord, that you are coming back uh, to make this broken world whole, God, to make our broken hearts new. That's why we can still hope. That's why we can still celebrate. So we thank you. We love you. Please continue to keep making us more and more like you every day. In your name we pray. Amen.